Pay attention to any of the bikeways around Brisbane on a weekday and you'll see the evidence of more and more people choosing to cycle or scoot to work, university or school. High quality infrastructure attracts people to ride. But without good connections to get to the high quality infrastructure, we're still keeping a lid on the potential of cycling for transport. This video is all about the Indrapilly River Walk, the absence of connections and your chance to ride with me on a community ride to highlight the issue. When the Indrapilly River Walk opened to much deserved fanfare in 2021, there were high hopes of a massive boost in cycling from the western suburbs of Brisbane to the University of Queensland at St Lucia. Part of the Indrapilly Bikeway, designed to link the Centenary Cycleway at Chapel Hill to the UQ Bikeway at St Lucia, the River Walk was the most complex and expensive section. The River Walk is, without question, a world-class piece of infrastructure. Built above the Brisbane River, it runs parallel with a narrow winding road along the riverbank, cuts under the road rail and pedestrian bridges that go across the Brisbane River from Indrapilly to Chelmer, and neatly connects to the existing bikeway near Indrapilly train station. It's mostly flat, and despite having to climb a bit of elevation out from the river, it's gradual enough that even the most hill of earth cyclists can manage. It has spectacular views of the Brisbane River and the historic Walter Taylor Bridge above. With dedicated cyclist and pedestrian paths, it's very comfortable whether you're out for a leisurely walk, a run, walking or riding to school, or out for a group ride. Because of the complexity of building in a river that floods it didn't come cheap, coming in at around $54 million. To realise the return on investment, Council needs plenty of people using it, and in particular, using it instead of car trips. But while more than 14,000 people use the river walk every single week, more than half of that is pedestrian trips, and a lot of what's observed is recreational use. The level of commuting cycling is not what Council predicted, and there's very good reason. Lack of connectivity. This section from the Centenary Cycleway to the start of the Riverwalk involves crossing an offset intersection between Whitten Road and Kate Street. When traffic isn't heavy it's quite manageable, but during school pickup and drop off time it's pretty chaotic. People choose a variety of different ways to navigate this intersection. The fearless or confident take a vehicular cycling approach and take a similar path as a motorist. But less confident or interested but concerned cyclists try to make do with footpaths. Even taking a detour to go up the pedestrian crossing lights about 200 metres up the road. The good news is the Brisbane City Council is in the process of designing a bikeway solution through here and is seeking more state government funding to complete that design process. Hopefully construction will start this financial year. However, even in that best case scenario, that would make it three years since the river walk opened before breaking ground on this vital connection, which is disappointing. Connectivity is also a problem at the other end. Trying to get from the Riverwalk to Indrapilly State High School, St Peter's or the University of Queensland is similarly challenging. Between Clarence Road and Fairley Street there is no cycling facility at all and with hundreds of school students occupying the footpaths on both sides that's not an option. Which leaves kids riding on Lambert Road precariously between parked and moving cars. While council has advanced in planning on the connections to the Centenary Bikeway end, they're only just starting to think about the solutions at this end. While kids on bikes and scooters are mixing it with cars through here, it's a nerve-wracking experience. There is plenty of space here to provide protected bike lanes. All it requires is to use the existing road space more sensibly to provide protected bike lanes along with the two traffic lanes. There would still be enough room for some street parking and the bus stop. Council is starting to look at this first section to Fairley Street, but it's very early days. The idea is that there's an existing shared path from Fairley Street to the UQ bikeway, so this is the priority. There's merit in that, but the existing shared path will certainly need to be improved. Before school and after school, the path is well and truly dominated by Indrapilly High students walking to and from the train station. And don't misunderstand me, that's a great thing. But it does make riding a bike through here very awkward. The shared path crossing of Carnarvon Road is extremely odd. Right angle turns and an awkward stop to check for traffic, and the crossing does not actually prioritise pedestrians or cyclists and then the shared path gets narrower between the road and the school fence. However, riding on the road when there is a lot of traffic and people reversing into spaces to drop their kids off, it's not a good experience. Lambert Road through here is exceedingly wide, with more than enough room to accommodate protected bike lanes and still retain some drop-off and parking space. Just maybe not on both sides of the road. It might make some of these parents dropping their kids off gasp, but if you ask, most of them would tell you the reason that they drop their kids off in the car is because it's not safe for them to walk or ride. 
In that case, there's more value in using the road space to prioritise cycling and scooters than it is to allow parents to park, particularly when reversing in and squeezing out causes so much of the congestion that people seem to complain about. What's frustrating is that as far back as June 2018, the cycling community, including myself, told Brisbane City Council that they had to consider and plan for the connections for the Riverwalk before it was finished. Here we are, two years after it's open, and we're still only talking about concept designs and planning. The speed at which the bureaucracy of Brisbane City Council works is, well, slower than the traffic on Lambert Road every morning. In an effort to push the issue along, State MP for Maywa, Michael Berkman, is hosting a community ride on Saturday the 1st of April, leaving from Ambrose Tracy College on Bridge Street at 8.30am, riding along the Indrapilly River Walk and Lambert Road to Robertson Park. I'll be there, along with Space Recycling Brisbane and Brisbane West Bug, and a coffee van. So why not come along and say hello over a coffee? While you're here, don't forget to like this video, and if you like what I do, subscribing really helps. Brisbane has the potential to be a great city for cycling and active transport. There's already some fantastic world-class infrastructure, but it's let down by the lack of connections from those high-quality routes to people's homes and other destinations. While both the council and the state government love the flashy marquee projects like the Riverwalk and the V1 Bellaway, or tossing in some bikeway when cutting the ribbon on a brand new strode or motorway in beginning, the best bang for buck comes from converting wastefully used wide road reserves like this to accommodate cycle lanes. This is a great opportunity. Let's push that pedal and get going. Ride safely, drive rarely, and hopefully I'll see you at Michael Berkman's ride on the 1st of April.